Hello, hopefully you can hear me and welcome to day two, the final day of this match. Me versus the Komodo, the dragon, the killer, the silicon destroyer, the beast from Silicon Valley. You know what I mean? This very strong computer, the strongest computer in the world and I'm playing it at odds this odds match over four games and um, it's going to be very interesting to see how I get on today. Now I had a good day yesterday um, but the odds were vastly in my favour. For example, as I said before, this is an odds match meaning that I would have no chance in a billion years in a normal game of chess against Komodo. Just check out Komodo's FIDE rating. I mean, that's just a number which I don't even understand. That's astronomical. 3350. That would put Magnus Carlsen to shame. So um, the match here is going to be quite interesting. Um, but what's going to happen? Well, I'm one and a half up against two. In the first game I played yesterday, this was the starting position, but it was my move. So basically, Komodo started without the F-pawn, and I had free tempo, but my first two moves had to be E4 and D4, and I managed to win that game after a very hard struggle. In the second game, um, which is going to be played later on today as well, the fourth game will be played later on today at 9pm GMT, um, there was... I was the exchange up. I started an exchange up. Very exciting game. Lots of tactics going on. I had to weather a storm of an attack from Komodo. Komodo sacrificed a rook against me like a lunatic. I managed to get to a position where I was better but then made a mistake and bailed out with a draw. So it was a drawn game. And today it's going to be tough because the odds are slightly worse. In the first game, the game I'm going to commentate on now whilst playing, we are starting in this position. But it is Komodo's move, which is going to make it a lot more difficult than yesterday. Now, there is a financial incentive for me on every half a point I get, but every win I get, I get quite a lot more. Not astronomical amounts of money, but a little bit of cash. So I've got to, you know, but I'm enjoying playing this match as well. Very interesting match at the same time. There's also quite a lot of the match because I think I may have agreed yesterday that if I lose the match to Komodo, I might chop off this weird whatever it is that's grown out the top of my head. Uh, what, the, what the hell is that? I don't know. It's just like it just appeared one morning. One morning I woke up and it was there like a bad smell. Um, so if I lose the match, that might be coming off. Um, which could be a good thing, you know, it's just, a, it's, but, you know, who cares, it's just something a bit different, you've got to try different things in life, who cares, I don't care, that's for sure, but um, I'm not quite as nervous as I was yesterday, because I managed to get a win um, on the board, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because it's quite good to be nervous when you're playing, it makes you play a little bit better, I have done a bit of preparation for this match, not a great deal, but I, I had a look this morning for an hour on um, a previous match that Komodo played against Robert Hess, and I put some positions on Komodo. So I prepared against Komodo with Komodo. That's kind of like if you're playing, as I said yesterday, preparing against Magnus by using Magnus to prepare against you. It's a little bit weird, but I mean, that means basically what you can do, you can set up the position, you can press a button, then you can go and have a lay down, have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, maybe a bit of breakfast, and let Komodo do all the hard work preparing against Komodo. So, you know, preparation is part of the game. I haven't done too much, just looked at a couple of ideas, you know, a couple of cheeky little ideas. But the pressure is, if I make one mistake, one mistake, then I will lose. You cannot make mistakes against such a strong computer. Now, I did a little bit of research on Komodo before we start, and Komodo as I'm going to bring up now, has been reigning champion, uh, chess engine champion for the last, I believe, three years. And it just beat Stockfish in a 100-game match. 100-game match. There you can read a little bit about Komodo. So it is quite clearly the strongest chess playing program on the market at the moment, being world champion for this vast amount of time three years it's incredibly strong 
Komodo. It has a great positional style as well as um, spotting tactics in an instant. And obviously I recommend, you know, I, I say when people are learning chess, people rely too much on computers in some ways because they don't use their own brain. But in a lot of ways, computers are invaluable for improving your repertoire, trying to get some um, insight, an edge over your opponents. For example, if you want to know an opening position, that you've read in a book and you're not sure, put it on Komodo. If you want, to, if you know your opponent plays a certain line, put it on Komodo. Let Komodo do all the hard work. So it's a very good tool to have. And I know I'm going to do my little sales pitch for Komodo now because I, I've, I've realized how brilliant it has been when I've been using it to prepare for this match. You can even put it on deep analysis and leave it overnight, which is really good tool. And you can get it logged up to your chess base and other things. So it's a very good tool to have. So I suggest that if you're looking for a chess com computer, Komodo would certainly be the computer of the pros. It's the computer of the professionals. Um, so I'm hoping now that uh, Komodo has not run away scared. And I think we're ready to start the match. So um, in this case now, I'm going to have to wait for Black to make the first move. Yesterday, I was making the first move, but I'm ready to go. So if Larry who is the programmer um, of Komodo and an international master himself, very strong player, um, or maybe a grandmaster. Well, I hope I got that right. It could be a grandmaster. I, I, I don't know the American chess players as well as I should do. I apologise for that. Um, but I'm now waiting for Komodo to make the first move, and we'll see how we get on. Um, and I've got my coffee. There we go. Nice bit of coffee. And I've got my sparkling water, so I'm taking this one quite seriously, should we say. So let's hope Komodo will make a move soon, and then we can get rolling, 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 rolling with the game. So good. Um, okay, so let's hope Komodo's ready, and we're going to wait for this match to take place. Uh, and while we do that, I'll have some tea, coffee even, coffee. I've got my coffee machine, so you might have heard it rolling yesterday. So um, I'm just going to sit here. I'm hoping I haven't had any contact with Komodo. Apparently, their training camp, they don't allow any um, activity or influence with the outside world. Uh, Larry and the Komodo team, they lock themselves in this big mansion in America, apparently, and they ban all press all agencies, all communication with the outside world. They've been living in this, what we can call the Komodo bunker for the last, it's rumored to say a hundred years, preparing for this match. And this is why Komodo has become such a great computer. So there's no contact with Komodo. I don't know how Komodo is getting on. I'm just gonna have to hope that Komodo has turned up today and not Donna Bobby Fisher against Spassky. You might remember in the famous probably the match of the century world championship it's called the world championship match of the 70 1972 i hope i got that right in reykjavik iceland bobby fisher when he challenged for the world championships against the reigning champion from russia boris spassky we can uh, we might remember that um Fisher did not turn up for one of the games. So is Komodo going to do the same here? I'm going to claim a default. If we don't get a move off Komodo soon, I, I'm, claiming, I'm claiming my default. Look, look, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm claiming the point. Um, and it is a clock. I'm, going to st I'm starting the clock. Look, Komodo, I'm pressing your clock. Chick, 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 chick. So come on, Komodo. Let's see it. Let's see your play. Um, and... Right, I'm just waiting for the move now. So I'm just going to check with uh, uh, just check with the team that I've got here um, whether Komodo is about. Is so I'm just going to see if Komodo is ready because obviously I'm not allowed to speak to Komodo. Uh, Komodo is Komodo ready? There's a lot of O's in Komodo. Um, okay, so let's see and. Uh, See if uh, I'm just waiting now. So just wait until I have a bit, a bit more, a bit more uh, coffee while we wait. And we'll see. Okay, because you know, there's only so much rubbish I can talk without discussing some chess, and I can talk quite a lot of rubbish, as you may have already realised. Yeah, believe it or not, but um, 
if I have to talk rubbish for a, a two hours, I'd rather much talk about my thought processes and what I'm going to try to do today, um, as well as trying to win. I will tell you what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking, because how a grandmaster thinks throughout this match. And I think this could be quite useful tools for you at home that if you want to know how a grandmaster thinks when he's actually playing in a competitive match i'm going to try to talk out loud and tell you my thought processes of the position hopefully you'll be able to learn from what i'm speaking about and my ideas and the 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 sort of setups i'm going for and what i'm thinking um you might have noticed yesterday that one of the things i did quite a lot was I really tried to stop Komodo doing what Komodo wanted to do. And that was get, that was, uh, you know, I was, I mean, I had to jump into the deep end in the second game, but in the first game, I restricted Komodo's pieces and restricted their mobility. And I'll tell you now, my philosophy for this game is I'm going to play very aggressively in my normal attacking style. Um, I've got a setup I might try here, maybe a unique setup, but I'm going to play in a very aggressive way. I'm going to try to take the game to Komodo, and I'm going to hope that by piling the pressure on him, obviously he's not going to blunder, computers don't blunder, but at some point the position will have to give something else, and maybe one more pawn. And if I can win two pawns, I will then aim to take, or even one pawn, I will try to take the game into an ending. It be very hard to checkmate the computer because it's Komodo. I'll give it a go. I will have a crack. But my philosophy is to really attack, attack, attack. If I get a chance to liquidize into a good ending, I'm happy to do that as long as I have a material advantage and an advantage. The second game will be played later on tonight at 9 p.m. GMT. And that um, is this exchange odds game where we will. I will try to play in a similar way to what I did yesterday. Just try to. Well, that was a crazy game, real crazy game. So, still haven't heard anything um, from people whether what's going on. So, um, I'm just going to try to check a little bit more. I'm sure you guys are getting a bit uh, a bit bored of me wabbling on without any moves. So, just bear with me, and I'll, I'll try to find out what what's actually happening because the match was due to start. 15 minutes ago. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to claim a win on time if Komodo is not fair. Mm. So, just trying to find out now where Komodo is and uh, then we we'll get then we we'll get going hopefully. Da, 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 da. Okay, getting getting some more information now. Otherwise, I'm claiming that win on time. It's coming, it's coming. I'm just going to say, look, Komodo, you turned up too late. I'm taking the point. And what entertainment that will be for you. Um, uh, da, da, da. It's not... Okay, apparently... Okay, let's... Uh, I'm just going to try to invite him again. Okay, so Larry is there. Good. And there's just some slight problem with the board. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to, I'm going to try to, uh, whoa, hello. I'm going to try to sort out now and we'll get going very, very shortly. Um, okay. Uh, let me just try. Okay. So let me just try to invite him again. Okay. We'll be ready soon. Don't worry. Come on. Um, we'll be going soon. I just need to find out. Um, oh, Komodo chess. Ah, okay. That's why I was doing it wrong. So it's actually my fault um, why I was doing it wrong. Okay, okay, okay. So I was doing Komodo, not Komodo chess. So I should actually be losing on time. Uh, okay, so it's not anything to, not any of, uh, not any of Komodo's fault. It was actually me. I I, I typed the wrong command in. So, um, okay. <laughs> so we should be should be ready now. 
Ah, there we go. Okay, we're off. Okay, so I'm sorry about that, but we are actually rocking and rolling now. And um, I'm okay. I've got a setup. I'm going to try. And this is a setup that I had a little look at and that uh, Robert Hess actually used. And uh, look, one of the best things in life is if um, rather than do your own work, let someone else do the work for you. So cheers, Robert. Okay, so. Um, and it was my fault about the late starting because I didn't invite Larry correctly. But we're off now, and that is the main thing. So Bishop D3. And I was, I have to admit, looking at lines 1, Knight to H3 as well. Um, and that was uh, my other sort of little bit of work I did on this. But then I, I saw some interesting games that Robert Hess had. In his last match against Komodo, I'm not planning to follow them totally, and I'm kind of hoping actually that Komodo is going to be the first side to make a, a change because I'm kind of double bluffing and I'm kind of thinking like Komodo is not going to follow what Robert Hess did. If he does, then you know he does, and um, he is following what Robert Hess did so far. And Robert now played c3, which I'm also going to follow this one. Um, I like I like this setup because half my plan is aggression and the other half of my plan is to restrict Komodo's pieces. And by placing my pawns like this, I'm restricting his bishop from coming into the game. And we are actually following um, the... Well, I looked at this article and I tried to memorise it earlier on. And this was the, the game between Robert Hess and Komodo. So I'm just going to try to remember... The analysis that I did now. Um, there's quite a lot of complicated lines, and I'm going to go with the same idea I had yesterday. Originally, not my idea, Robert Hess's idea, and that is knight to h3 because it seemed to work quite well in that game. And the point of me putting the knight here is twofold. Number one, I want to leave Freddy the f pawn some room to rush. We've got to leave Freddy the f pawn some room. And the other idea is to, as Robert pointed out in his article for chess.com, I recommend you go to that and you have a look at it, is to leave the queen some room to come over here. Now, in the, in the original match between Robert Hess and Komodo, we're following, can you believe we're following theory? I mean, there's something very wrong. I, should, I mean, following theory in this position is bonkers. In the original game, Komodo tried two moves, knight to f6 and the move g6. Now against knight to f6, I'm going to continue. Now queen to h5 is not an option that is readily available to me. So I now can continue with an idea of threading, threading, throwing Freddy the f-pawn. And to get that idea to work, we are going to castle first and then try to use Freddy the f-pawn, um, I believe. I hope I haven't. Um, done something wrong here. Um, I think, no, I haven't done anything wrong. This is all following now the preparation that I've done already. So bishop e7. Yeah, we're still following this game, this game that um, of Robert Hess's. So I'm hoping Komodo doesn't have some idea in mind. Now I'm just trying to think how that game went before I dive into it and make sure that I ha I'm not walking. Well, I mean, even if I walk into a novelty, look, I'm a pawn up. I shouldn't worry. Now the game went. Let's just see how far it can go. Test my memory. Went f4, e5, which I think black has to play. So I'm talking you through what I think is going to happen. Attacking the knight on h3. So knight. So went f4, e5. Knight to g5 was then played. And I think h6 is correct. Knight to f3. But maybe I have another idea. There was a very complicated line of bishop e2, a piece sack there that Robert spoke about. But knight to f3 was played castles are then d5 and that that was very interesting so this is a uh, this was how the game went so i think i like to say i'm going to stick to some of this and i'm going to use my f pawn i mean it's a bit wrong that there is theory developing in this but you know what there's money on the game so i'm going to do my homework sunny jim it's like any chess tournament you've got to do your homework you can't be a chess. You can't be a great chess player. I'm not saying I'm a great chess player. An average chess player, without doing your homework. I mean, it's just a. It's it's a typical thing. So that's how the game went. It went e5, knight g5, 
h6 when an interesting move is the peace sack bishop e2 and the other line which Robert played is knight to f3 and the reason I'm playing this is because I looked at his article earlier which you can see in the article section if you search Robert Hess I'm following I'm copying something someone else's work I've got no imagination of myself so if in doubt just copy someone else what can be easier in life hopefully that will win me some cash and then I can chill out so that's the cheer cheers cheers okay so that's your idea um now the only move I considered was e5 here I'd be extremely happy if black doesn't go e5 because I will play e5 myself and go for a checkmate attack on h7 I mean if he castles here it means castling is suicidal because I will rip that king apart with e5 and queen h5 I will just tear it I will tear Komodo limb to limb how many times do you see a kimono get torn apart? Well, torn apart, teared apart. That's not very good English. And I have to remind you, it is English and not American. So e5, like I said, following the preparation that um, we already had. Now, I'm not going to mess about. I'm going to go knight g5 because I'm confident. I'm going to go for it. And this is what I have prepared anyway. Okay, so... Now, I did look at pawn takes d4, um, but h6 was my main point of preparation. And this is a very aggressive play here. Um, obviously, I have ideas of putting a piece on the long diagonal, a bishop or a queen, when my knight will be able to try to hop in and create some chaos. Other ideas include just going forwards and trying to checkmate the machine. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about my preparation until we see what Komodo does because uh, Komodo's got ears everywhere. He's got his ears everywhere. And when I say I've done some preparation, I'll be honest, it wasn't that much. So I'm just sort of hoping it's enough. And uh, it's unbelievable we're following theory. But, uh, you know, you've got to, we'll get to some mad position soon. So what's happening here? Well, um, this is a very aggressive way to play for white. And I think when your opponent does not have... Okay, so he's gone h6. And now here, there was two very interesting lines. There was bishop e2, a sacrificial line here. But I'll be honest, against a computer, some of the positions after bishop e2 were so murky that I, I still think white had an advantage there. But I don't think I'm going to go for this bishop, bishop e2 because after some long calculations, I might not be well paired. So the more logical move is for me now to bring my knight back into the center. It may look like I've wasted two tempo, but the way I'm figuring the position and the way I'm sure Robert was figuring the position is that I've managed to play f4. That's one advantage. And the move h6 from my opponent has made some weaknesses, especially on the light squares especially g6 now i actually did a little bluff there last move when black had played h6 i suddenly realized that black could win a pawn by taking on d4 and i said i had a look at that i i hadn't looked at that at all i was just in case larry was listening and thought right let's let's change komodo and make him take on d4 i i i should have maybe looked at that line which i'm sure i had loads of conversation but i didn't so i'm jolly glad that uh, i'm jolly glad that uh it's it's gone castle now in the game between Robert Robert now played d5 knight b8 and he took on e5 and he got a very good position but it looked a little bit too open Komodo style so my idea as um, as an improvement is to keep the position more closed depending what Komodo plays so we're still in my fort, and I'm going to go queen b3 check. And this is still what I had. This is this is commo This is a combination of my seconds, my virtual seconds, Komodo and Robert Hess. So thank you very much, both of you, for helping me out. And uh, this check I thought was uh, quite an interesting way to continue. Um, when again, I'm not going to give away too much here because 
you know, that would be... I'll, I'll give it away when I've got out my theory. Now, again, the general idea, when you're playing against computers, I love tactical chess. I've had two very tactical games so far. And um, they were quite both quite chaotic, to be honest. Um, now, so I'm just trying to remember something here as well. Good. I'm very happy the computer went there and not h7. I was keeping quiet there because king h7 is a move in the in when I did my prep in the morning. I thought, why doesn't black put his king on h7? And I didn't really understand why he puts it on h8. So we're still following my prep, and my prep is going to end very soon. But well, I say my prep. It's Robert. Robert made this in his notes, and the idea is, okay, now my master plan is to go knight h4, f5 and stick a knight on g6. And this is the preparation I had prepared in the morning. Um, basically, just uh, I, that's as far as I went. Um, trying to keep a closed position. Now, generally, I had two tactical open games in the, in the first two encounters. And now I've decided in this game, because I haven't got much uh, as much advantage, only one pawn, I thought I'd keep the position closed and i keep it... Um, more manoeuvring and try to somehow use my extra pawn but I'm, I'm going to be out of my theory very soon I'm just going to have to play some chess then which is well absolutely fine and the idea okay so of course the idea is to now take hold of this newly created g6 weakness so I'm simply going to go f5 and knight h4 in some i'll go knight h4 first stick my knight on g6 and then i will try to attack don't worry i'm not going to play like a boring old man some old men can play very exciting but i think my general plan here is to go put my knight on f on g6 f5 and then avalanche so i'm going to go h3 g4 h4 g5 attack 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 that, this is my general this is my general idea and I've just worked that idea out now of how to proceed and and let's remember if I win this game I've won the match and you know I, I, I don't want to cut my top knot off so it, I want to win this match obviously um, I obviously want to win it quite you know I, I'm quite competitive so I want to uh, at least put as much pressure on my opponent as possible and I think as long as I don't make any mistakes which I'm obviously going to make small mistakes as long as I don't make any major mistakes then I should be okay so here again following my idea knight h4 was now my continuation and next move I go f5 I put my knight on g6 this is what you call good preparation and probably as soon as I get out of my preparation I'm going to go and collapse um only if I was playing a human, I might have considered taking on e5 there, uh, something like that. But it gets quite murky and messy in in that position, and I I don't want to allow my opponent's pieces to come to life because I'm playing a computer, and I saw how strong tactically Komodo is yesterday. I mean, I managed to hang on by by my teeth, but I thought I'd just try a different tactic today, a more closed position, just to see how it is. Um, I just like to remind everyone I'm I'm not I can't look at any comments in the chat here, and I can't look at any comments on the chess.com slash TV channel because obviously I'm not allowed to see any suggestions that are coming through after the game. As long as I'm not too annoyed with myself, let's hope not. I will um, I will chat about the game and look at the comments on chess.com TV. But at the moment, it's just me versus the machine. That's all it is. Okay, so knight h4. One of the worrying things that happened last week is um, you might want to check out my YouTube channel. Um, right, let me just make sure I got this right. Um, so f5 was what I had prepared, and this is as far as I got. So I'm going to play this. I don't think there's any tactics with black taking these because I always have knight g6, worst case. So this is as far as I got in my prep, and I just thought I stick my knight on g6, and then and then I start thinking for myself. Um, it was quite a worrying sign that in the London Classic last week I was playing against the Grandmaster, um, 
and I played the Sicilian wing gambit. I got to a position which is plus 18 and I couldn't win the game. I only drew and I can't afford to make mistakes like that against Komodo today. Um, you can look, I have a YouTube channel if you want to check it out. I can't type it anywhere, but the YouTube channel is, um, if you just search Ginger GM, which is kind of my nickname, Ginger GM, then you'll find my YouTube channel. And on that channel, I've put up that video and loads of other videos. So that's a good way to get some free stuff, free videos. They're all free, you don't have to pay a penny. Um, go there, check out some free videos. It might help your chess, you might find it entertaining, or you might just find it like, oh my God, I hate this guy, I've got to get rid of this channel immediately, which is also fine. Okay, so I will start thinking properly soon. Um, and well, I should probably do that now, shouldn't I, to be honest? <laughs> um, so I believe my general plan here, looking at the position, just looking now, I'm probably going to bring my king back, queen back to d1 to control this diagonal. I will then put my knight on g6. I may even go c4, knight c3 to develop all my pieces. I don't, there's no need to attack without strong foundation oh my word what is that what the hell is that it's a thunderbolt well i did not expect that move let's just just to put it mildly i've been hit by some preparation um okay that's a that's whoa whoa um that, that's a shocker um maybe i should have left the my engine running and preparation a bit more. What is so Komodo? It seems a sacrifice in the exchange here. Now, if I take the knight, he takes my knight. I was assuming that knight g6 is the problem with this, so I'm very tempted just to continue with knight g6 here. I think I probably have to. Let me just try, okay, try to work out what what on earth that move is all about. So Komodo thinks that he wants to try to sack the exchange to gain active play, rather than sit there in a in a blockaded position. So, I mean, the other option here is is surely pawn takes knight, and then if bishop takes here, f6 check. So I've got a lot to think about now. Either knight g6 or pawn takes knight. So. Just bear with me. I'm just going to try to work this out um, quietly now. And uh, I'll come back to you when I've done a bit of analysis. And it's probably nice for you guys to have a bit of sound of silence as well, to be honest. I do talk quite a lot. <laughs> okay. And the other idea here is F6. What if I go F6 immediately? Oh, knight takes. Okay. Because F6 here, if any other piece except for the knight takes, I take his knight with check. But F6, knight takes. And then I'm pawn down. So that would not be good. If I take on d5, he takes my knight. And I think I can... I, I'm look, I mean, I don't think... Okay, so I'm thinking pawn takes. Bishop takes h4. f6 check. So try to picture this position. Analyze with me. And then maybe g6 there. And I'm seeing if I have any good moves there. But to be honest, my pieces are not so well positioned to start an attack in, in that structure. Unless I can find some very exciting continuation there which I, I to be honest i can't at the moment um might still be okay there somehow some f7 move it's a very risky way to play that though i mean if i take takes f6 check g6 f7 very risky then queen e7 and something like queen c4 Trying to attack g6. I think he can defend now. I'll just check it one more time. If not, I'll play knight g6. If I if I can't work out pawn takes knight, I'm just going to play knight g6. 
that would be my, my secondary option. Got to look at all options when you play. Okay, knight g6 it has to be. This has to be the move. Yeah, okay, because I, I, I don't think the other line with pawn takes knight and f6 was really uh, attacking. You, you should only really attack from strong foundation. And um, to be honest, with my knight on b1 and my bishop on c1, it doesn't seem like I've got quite enough development. If my b1 knight was over on the king side, like g3 or something like that, then maybe there were some tactical chances. But instead, this knight g6 move seems to win the exchange. So it's an interesting sacrifice from Komodo taking here, unless I'm missing something, and that could be right. So I'm attacking the rook, and I'm attacking the knight. So... I'm assuming that Komodo will now move the knight. So indeed, the knight has moved back to f6. Now I could take on f8. My knight is an awfully strong piece as well, though. Awfully strong. So I'm kind of thinking if there's any other options here. Because if the rook moves, do I have bishop takes h6? <laughs> this is getting a bit balmy. So I'm just thinking hypothetically... If if he moves, if Komodo moves the rook, well, if he moves to e8, can I then play bishop h6? The idea pawn takes queen f7 checkmate. Well, let me just look at some lines and I'll come back to you because of course he can go to this square. But then I have queen f7. I mean, taking a rook is a, is a natural, normal, logical move to play, but he will then break out at some point with this. And if I go c4, I give him the d4 square. So. Always consider your options. I mean, even a move like rook, rook h3 is uh, interesting. But then, then I'm worried about d5. He's going to uh, Komodo is going to try to break with d5. This is the idea. I mean, I should. I think I should take the material. Why? Well, I mean, okay, I'll take the material. I, I mean, I can't. I can't. See a reason why not to take the rook. Komodo. What would Komodo do? Komodo would take the rook. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna do what Komodo would do. I take the rook. And then after queen takes or bishop takes, I'm thinking I want to stop this break d5. I think queen takes is best to stop my queen infiltrating into f7. Must be best. So queen takes must be best. And then after this move, I'm sure Komodo. Well, he can't play d5 straight away. I don't think so. Maybe I just need to develop. Um, I've got to watch out for tactics, do I? Something like knight here. Because my, my setup ideally would be something along the lines of, because my pawn and f5 is very useful, it would be along the lines of c4, something like king h1, get off the diagonal for any checks, knight c3, bishop e3, and then just try to eventually still push my g pawn up the board, but only when I'm fully developed so that 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 is my i think long-term plan here in the meantime i'm sure komodo will try to get active with ideas of d5 is one critical idea that i've got to i've got to consider d5 here when pawn takes us to check a knight here i don't believe that um i mean i could just go c4 but then then i i, I don't want to rush into allowing the black knight a d4 square you don't want to give your opponent squares for free if I go bishop e3 straight away, I run into knight g4. I don't really want to allow that. Um, is my knight coming to d2? Is it good on d2? I, I don't know. I think it might be needed to come to c3. So, could be wrong. I mean, I could try to get my knight here. How about this? Knight, bring my knight around like this. <laughs> is that ridiculous? Not ridiculous, you know. I don't think it is anyway. My knight on f3 is okay, you know. Not so bad, because at least it's an aggressive square then. If the knight comes here, I always have h3. The more I look at bringing my knight around to this route, the more I'm liking it, because putting my knight on c3 
seems a little bit like mm, a little bit too well, I don't know I mean I okay so maybe I should wait and see what Komodo does because if Komodo goes c6 I can play c4 and then his knight can't come into the center so that that's not so silly so maybe I should do a waiting move here and if knight c6 then I can move my knight this way so maybe king king to h1 is a very clever waiting move here this is how I'm thinking at the moment it's a, a good a good uh, solid option now, is my opponent threatening to go d5, takes e4? That's the only other thing. I don't see why that should work. Not with my king on. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go king h1. This is a useful, useful move to play. I think, in my opinion, you can go c3 and attack like this. But then my queen. Well then I then I will play this I think. Okay, I'm going to play I'm going to play this waiting move, king h1. Just to just to see how my opponent is planning to continue here. Um I'm not sure if it's the best move, but I want to see cuz if my opponent goes c6, then I go c4. And the black knight can't reach d4 then. If my opponent goes knight c6, then I may go knight d2. Because it's very hard for Komodo to break then with the move d5. And my king is just a bit more secure here. I'm hoping it's going to avoid any tricks later on of a potential check. And also now my bishop on c1 can come to e3. Because if knight g4 it drops back to the g1. This is the typical maneuver. Pulling your bishop back to g1. Consolidate the bishop there. The bishop has quite a nice diagonal and you can kick the knight away of h3. And eventually I still want to come with my pawns on the king side. So this is this is the way I'm thinking. I don't know if it's best. I really don't. Maybe it was better for me to move the knight in quickly like this. This would have made a lot of sense as well. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But I just want to, you know, if d5 now, I, I've just got to watch out for the breaks. My opponent is still a long way from getting active in this position. So there's still my opponent still requires a lot of uh, moves to gain some activity. Um, and if I can develop my pieces nicely, my remaining two pieces, then I think I should be quite happy with uh, the, the way it's going. You're going down, Komodo. You're going down to the you're going down to the scrapyard where all the bad machines go. The, the the machine scrapyard. They all go there. You're going there. You're going to be turned into um, aluminium rust. That's where you're going, Komodo. Not that he's actually a, a real machine. He's actually a program. But you know, I, you know, I don't really want to mention that too much. He's actually kind of a a process rather than actually a machine. But you know, there we go. Um, so it doesn't actually make any sense what I'm saying. But yeah. Who cares? Um, right. Well, it's made him think, this this move. I've got 33 minutes left. So I've already spent 15 minutes on the opening. But I like I like spending quite a lot of time in the opening because I need to just consider. I, I mean, I, I, it's so important not to make any mistakes. Um, so, Komodo. Right. I have to say it's a bit different for me playing a game of chess whilst talking because obviously that does affect maybe the standard a little bit. I mean, okay, it's good for you guys if you're watching this because you can understand my thoughts. But um, maybe it's a bit harder when you're talking because you, you know you're not you don't quite get in the zone. And the other thing is I've got a really nice swingy chair here, and it's so relaxing just to do this all day as well. I could, you know, I'd be a very happy man if on, on like Christmas Day, if this was my Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas. Yes, we do. I mean, that that would be. That's my kind of Christmas. Maybe with a drink here, you know. I wish you. A, okay, B six. I thought B six was maybe coming. Okay, logical move. Trying to pressurize this pawn here. 
Right, T.O., here we go. Okay, so, I'm thinking I wanna go C4. Then the knight comes in, bishop e3, knight d4, takes, takes, and he's going to try to put his knight here and bring his knight to e5. This is his idea. And he wants to go bishop here and here anyway. So, okay, first things first. What about my idea of bringing my knight around here? Can I get this to work? Knight d2, bishop b7. And he's going to break with d5. And I want to stop my opponent's activity. I don't. I want to minimize my opponent's activity to 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 the minimum I can. This is key. Key to success in this game is minimizing activity. So I'm just got to think of the correct plan. So. Do I really want to go c4? It does allow him to get this nice, nice grip here. I don't know if I want to play this, you know. What about bishop e3, bishop b7, knight to d2? Finishing my development. Then he goes d5. Am I concerning myself about this d5 break? Unnecessarily. Well, what if I just take on d5? In these positions, he goes bishop takes, then bishop c4, attacking his bishop, offering exchanges. I have an e4 square. I quite like that. I like that. And I get my pieces developed. So I like this idea. Bishop e3, knight d2. I don't want to I don't want to give away the d4 square. So this is why I'm trying to not rush into playing c4, because I don't want to allow him to plonk here and take control of the dark squares. Even if he goes c5 and puts his knight here, it's not so easy to win. So I think bishop e3, bishop b7, knight d2 is my is my critical option then. But then knight, knight d7, trying to increase the pressure on the pawn. But I can always take that with my bishop, so I'm not worried. I get my rook to e1 and just finish my development, taking no overdue risks. I like this. Okay. If he goes knight g4, my bishop drops back here now. So I'm going to play this. I'm going to go bishop e3 with the idea of playing knight d2 and getting my pieces into the game. Rook e1 and trying to play like this. This is my way to play. And my dream is, of course, to get my knight on b1 to g6. This is my long-term dream. Okay, I'm just I'm, I'm obviously looking at all breaks my opponent has with moves like d5 here. I don't believe d5 works. If he's going to do it, he should go bishop b7, knight d2, then d5. But I think here I just take on d5 and I go bishop c4 and my bishop comes to e6. It should be positionally positionally good for him. My opponent can't can't get a, a, an attack here really with the queen on f8. So as long as I don't go over the top. I mean, I, I mentioned pushing my g pawn. I don't like this push of the g pawn now. Okay, so here I have to go knight d2. There's no point thinking. I'll play it straight away. Knight d2. And... Um, I want to try to just bring my last piece into the game, rook e1, so I over defend everything. I may even drop this back to g1 if need be, be super solid, and then when the timing's right, then I come forwards. I mean, c4 is not such a bad idea once I've covered the d4 square. Uh, with maybe at some point a knight on f3, or if his knight on b8 moves to d7 i'm not so worried about the knight coming to c5 because i can eliminate that piece and um if this knight moves it means it can't come to d4 so then i can continue continue maybe with the move c4 just trying to take a grip on any breaks my opponent has it's about restriction chess as much as it is about playing aggressive so he's gone here so he clearly wants to move his knight to c5 
I'm going to now not think too much because I don't think it's ne necessarily really. I think I'm going to... There's no d5 move here, is there? Takes then something to c5. Well, I'm going to get my last piece into the game. What can be more natural than bringing in the rook to e1? I mean, of course, I'm a little bit, little bit concerned in some structures about this d5 move. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I should have gone c4. Why didn't I even consider c4? I was just discussing this in length, and I, I maybe rushed too much into playing here. Actually, c4 last move was such a better way to play. Probably. I mean, okay, maybe I'm worrying too much because look, my pieces are nicely positioned. It's not. It shouldn't be bad for me, but c4 was a restrictive move now because uh, it would have stopped any d5 ideas. But if he goes d5, he's also weakening himself um, and I will take on d5 and at some point I'm hoping that my rooks remember I have an extra rook an extra exchange rooks need open lines so if he can if he opens up lines positionally speaking it should benefit me it should so I, I don't think d5 will be completely correct here actually but it's something that Obviously, I'm a little bit worried about. My next move, I think, will be just bishop g1, because that gives my rook extra control of the file. And my basic plan is bishop g1, then e4 is defended very well, so I can continue knight f3, and maybe, just maybe, I can get my maneuver in. And if my knight gets to g6, well, he's not going to give up another rook for that, that maneuver, surely. So... Um, so here we go. Strange decision that he sacked the exchange in some respects, but also quite a practical decision from my opponent because he's given me many more. Um, he's given me many more things to think about than if I had a pawn on d5. He's making me. It's kind of like you're playing a human. He's using psychology against me. You shouldn't be allowed to do that, Komodo. You're a machine. He really is the Terminator. He's getting artificial intelligence and he's adapting to the situation. He's becoming sentinel and he's now thinking, right, I am thinking what Simon is doing. Simon likes it if he has a pawn on d5. I will eliminate that. I will gamble, 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 exterminate, exterminate. Is he really thinking like that? Am I really a Dalek? These questions have to be answered at some point in life, but not today. Um, I don't know. It seems like a very practical way to play. Computers aren't supposed to play practically, are they? Really? Not on my watch. You know? Okay, well, maybe. I mean, he's got an extra pawn in the center, so let's not underestimate that. Is he going to go c6 and d5? Yeah, go on. Go on then, mate. Make my, make my pajamas warm. I don't know what that means. It's just a new saying I actually just came up with. Uh, I'm also thinking now, okay, my queen is not so well placed here. I, I'm thinking now, I think I prefer my queen on d1, where I can maybe swing it around. I, I like the g6 square. I should, now I've finished my development, be thinking about landing a golden eagle on a g6 um, or my knight or queen. So this is the way I'm thinking now. If I win this game, I win the match. Komodo, you're going home in a coffin. So, a computer coffin. Okay, so, I need to keep it up. 30 minutes. I still have half an hour left to 37 minutes. So, all to play for. My other idea here is if I go bishop g1 when e4 is well defended, that frees up my knight or my bishop to move. Now, I've already discussed, if I go bishop g1, my knight can try to hop into g6. Not such a bad idea. But also, my bishop may start boogieing on the light squares. I mean, I could go boogie, boogie. And I could go bishop c4 and put it into e6. Or even, oh, hello. That's an idea, isn't it? I can even go bishop here into f7 and into g6. That is the key square. I want to land a piece upon the g6 square. 
That is clearly my aim. Oh, he's made a move. What's he done? What's he done? Has he made a move? Oh, he's gone d5. Oh, I didn't want him to play a move like that because it means I have to actually think. That's not very fair. Why do I want to? I don't want to think. Quite glad my king's here now. You see, this king's going to be quite useful on this square. Right, okay. Well, I can hardly be surprised. So, if I take here, he can't take the knight because f6 check is winning. Now, I'm not going to start playing like a, a wet lettuce, like a complete scared fool and and play like a move like queen c2 because that that is just like why am i playing chess i should be playing i should be playing i don't know tiddlywinks if i'm going to play a move like that so all in all i have to take now on this square i have to I, i'm going to take on d5 there's no point i'm not here to play tiddlywinks i'm here to play chess um so i'm going to take here and no, look, there's no reason that things should have gone too wrong for me because all my pieces seem to be on decent squares to me. Uh, but you never know against this machine. He just, he just, he, he's just a monster. Now he, I'm assuming, has to go bishop takes. If knight c5, well, if knight c5, I take it bishop takes c5. Then I just go c4, shutting his bishop out. I don't really have to worry about knight g4 because my queen then can swing across at some stage. So he has to go here. Now, ah, I suppose his idea is if bishop c4, c6. That could be his idea. Aha, so I found out his idea. Does that make me happy? No. Okay, so bishop c4, c6 is the idea, right. <clears throat> of course it is. I don't, I don't want to allow, I don't want to allow him to get another pawn into the center. That'd just be, be very silly to do that. I mean, c, c4 here is not a silly move. At all. I mean, the other idea of going queen c2 and trying to swap pieces on e4, very, very nat natural move. I'm, I like that a lot the more I look at it. But do I go c4 first or not? Do I? Can I go here? Is he ever going to take on a2? Well, he's not. He's not Bobby Fisher, is he? Komodo. That's his name. I like the idea of queen c2 and just controlling the square. Is queen a4 better? I don't think so. Queen c2, a nice solid move. And then he puts something on c5. Knight c5, bishop c5, bishop c5, knight to e4. Should be good for me. I want to control this square, the e4 square, and I want to use the e4 square as an outpost. This is my key, key idea. So if that's what my key idea is, I better go queen c2. Am I, okay, I've got to play queen c2. This is my key idea. I want to um, use the e4 square and to simply put a piece on e4 and try to, look, one of my ideas at the start of this game was play aggressively. But obviously, I'm not going to checkmate my opponent, but hopefully I get a material gain. I'm going to exchange up and then try to keep his initiative under control and swap pieces off. Get to an ending, win the ending as I did in the first game. So here, my idea is to play knight e4, try to swap off as many of these guys in the middle as I can, get to an ending and win the ending. That, that's, uh, this, is my, this is my strategy here. Let's see how lucky it is. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I could have gone c4 earlier, um, attacking the bishop, but there's that famous saying that the threat is stronger than the execution. And look, he, I can't be in any much danger here with his queen on f8 because the queen on f8 is uh, is is not not doing anything. 
So I'm quite happy with this. I'm reasonably, reasonably all right so far. And if I win this, Komodo, you're an embarrassment, embarrassment to the, the computer race. Go back to computer school. Well, look, I mean, I'm a long way from winning here, obviously, and I still don't think I'm favourite to win this game because I'm playing a 2350. Okay, right, so now he wants to win this pawn. Or does he? Now he wants to take this pawn. And he wants to get his queen sneaking out. You sneaky little Komodo. Sneaky little Komodo. Well, now I'm thinking the move c4 is looking like a much more sensible option. If I go knight e4, then he takes on a2. And I don't want to start giving him presents for free. It's not quite Christmas yet. So I think c4 is perfectly logical now. So I'm going to play it. And I'm going to then go knight to e4 and try to put a nice cement piece on that square. He might then try to get tricky on me. Go loco on me with queen over here. Maybe we'll deal, we'll deal with these problems when they occur. Uh, okay, maybe I even put my bishop on e4. That's controversial, but uh, the thing is, okay, if I put my knight on e4 when he moves his bishop, if I put my knight on that square, so what? What does that achieve? Does that achieve anything? I don't see why I put my knight on that square. I mean. I'm not really threatening to take it because he always takes for his knight. And I want to swap off pieces. So is putting my bishop on that square uh, an idea? Then he takes with his knight. I take with my knight. You can go knight f6 to block it, get rid of that. But then I just take it. I have to think about this again. So I'm expecting bishop b7. And then I probably put something on e4. What do I put on that square? Okay, bishop c6, similar, similar, similar thing. Okay. And I, I think Komodo now wants to get his queen somewhere over here to start pesticizing me. I don't know if that's a word either, but I don't care. So I'm really just thinking: Does my knight or my bishop go to the square? This is this is the this is what I'm I'm trying to trying to work out at this moment in time. I'm thinking bishop, but that does give him a very strong, very strong bishop here. I don't really want to give him good pieces for the sake of it. I mean, the ideal situation is to go here. And then to swap off, I want to swap off light square bishops. So if I go knight here, he goes queen here. Can I go rook f3? Let's just try to calculate that. What's my plan after knight e4? Aha, uh -huh. not so easy. Okay. So I'm just having a long think here because it's uh, not so simple what I should be doing. Well, I, I, th I think I think my knight should probably come to the square. Um, I don't like the idea of giving him two bishops, so I'm, I'm going to move my knight to the square. Um, whether it's right or wrong, I'm not sure. Just I didn't like the idea of putting my bishop here and just allowing him the two bishops, especially the bishop on c6. I want to keep some potential here 
of if he ever moves his knight on d7 to take on f6 and go bishop e4 when I'll be very close to winning then. So I, I'm trying to see what my opponent's plan is going to be here. And it might be something like rook d8. I mean, maybe he will give queen h5 a whirl here. Um, but I, 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 well, I'm hoping I should be able to defend against the, such an idea uh, of queen, queen over here. I don't know. Okay, well, that's that's a uh, well, a peculiar move. <laughs> I mean, why why put your a rook behind uh, your your pawn? I just don't understand. But you are the Komodo, and I'm just a just a GM. Okay, so now, uh, I mean, a, a move that might help my position is Bishop G one, just to over defend this square. It's a natural natural move. I mean, even moves like c5 and bishop c4 are kind of attractive in some positions, but that's why I think bishop bishop g1 is a useful move to play. Get my bishop out of the way and get my rook over defending some squares. So can he try to get his knight there? I don't think so because he'll open up my diagonal. So let's play it. Bishop to g1. And this is quite a safe setup, but it it's, looks like a logical setup to me as well. And uh, <clears throat> now my next plan for my next trick. Well, here, I mean, one idea now that my rook's here, I want to take on f6. Because if he goes knight takes f6, my rook now has access to e5. And it's all about control of the square. And if I go knight takes f6 and he takes with his bishop, then I play bishop e4. Then, then I'm very close to being structurally just winning. If my bit, if I can get my bishop to e4 structurally, I should I should be uh, should be winning. So this is a nice, well I don't know, maybe it's nice, but it's a solid positional way to continue the 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 fight. Now I don't know if I was a human, I'd be. I mean, queen h5 is a very human-like move here, isn't it? Just get the queen in and try to start punting with knight g4s, but. Uh, it, I mean, if he goes queen h5 now, I might even just go queen e2. And offer, offer the exchange of queens. So twenty three minutes. So this is where this is where I've got to start moving a little bit quicker, because uh, it goes very quick the time. And we saw what happened yesterday. As soon as I um, got shorter time, I made this mistake in a winning position. So I certainly don't want to do the same here. I certainly don't want to do that. By the way, my G-pawn is stuck to that square now. There's no way Gary is going to start moving up the board in this position. Not with this bishop here. That G-pawn is stuck there. It's going to just... I'm cementing it there. That is not going anywhere. Nowhere. Okay. I mean, I'm quite happy in the position. Can't be too sad about this, can I? I mean, I even before I even play knight takes f6, I, I could try now, just thinking of ways to improve my position. I like some manoeuvring like queen e2, maybe I go rook d1, and then try to take. I mean, I'm thinking about, can I expand on the queen side? a3, b4. I don't think I can because I probably just create more pawn weaknesses myself if he plays a move like a5. So I'm liking actually an idea here of queen e2, and then... I might even have some tactical ideas of then playing c5 to get my bishop to c4. That's very interesting. So these these are all, all possibilities here. I mean, if I was black here, I'd probably just go king h8. Um, trying to get my king off this this dangerous diagonal but then then I can I mean I really want to take on f6 next move and if knight takes f6 rook takes e5 I mean do I do I need to be afraid of any tactics my bishop very good defensive piece on g1 okay he's come here it's a move I kind of thought about but I didn't wasn't worried about Okay, so rook e3 is my first instinct. 
rookie three, and then I can go knight c5 then, because I haven't got full control of the square. And if rookie two, he goes queen h5 maybe, and he gets, starts to get a little bit annoying. Rook d1, quite like my rook on this file, this is the thing. So rook e3 I think is critical, rook e3 that's what I'm thinking about. Then knight c5 though, I don't want to allow, I don't want to allow him to control the c5 square. Rook e2, do I have to worry about this queen coming over to h5? Well, it can come there anyway, can't it? What about, I mean, now, if I just go rook e d1. Yeah, I mean, I'm losing a bit of control here. I'm going to kick this bishop away anyway, so maybe it's not so worrying. I think I'm just going to go rook d1. This looks like a nice, safe -ish square now. So I've got 23 minutes left, so I've got to start moving a little bit quicker now. So rook d1, and now it's a bit, it's obviously a good move. I'm, I don't know, expect him, him to play on any bad moves. Uh, I might have had a slightly more aggressive option than that. Maybe rook d1 is not the right square for the rook. Maybe I should have been considering trying to get my rook to g6 even, somewhere like this. But... Um, it doesn't look like it should be a major mistake as long as I can keep control of the e4 square. This is the key thing. I didn't want to go rook e3 because I need both my pieces controlling c5. And at the moment, I've just about managed to keep control of the c5 and e4 square. Uh, queen h5 is the only move which I'm slightly like, you know, well, you know, you can play it. It's the only move I, I, I you know, is, which is, a, is an annoying move, that one. But I'm not sure what he's going to play next if he does that, so I probably shouldn't be worried about it. I can go a3 and b4 as well at some point. And then stop. I mean, if he goes queen here, I might go a3, b4, and then just put my rook back here and say, well, you put your queen over here, what are you doing next? So I think that's my plan. So I expect he'll go a5 now to stop my advance over here. So this is, uh, this is what I'm thinking. And if he goes a5... I will probably go queen e2 to try to centralize a bit more and to take control of this diagonal. So this is the way I'm thinking. 22 minutes left against 30 minutes. So I'm going to try to play a bit quicker now. I don't want to get under 10 minutes because um, I might need a lot of time to think at a later moment. Um, so this is why I need to preserve my time preserve my sanity went a long time ago so and obviously I'm still I'm still really trying to win this game I'm exchange up why shouldn't I be trying to win this game there's no reason why I want to win this game if I win this game I win the match and that's that's what I want that's what I want that's what I want um, and I will for your information as well um, I'm kind of the warmer patzer that's playing Komodo. After I play Komodo, it's going to be Hikaru Nakamura, I believe. I believe uh, maybe there's one more Grandmaster, Mikulevsky. Uh, then Nakamura is going to be the computer's big challenge. That's going to be a great match. Can't wait for that one. Can't wait to see how Nakamura gets on. And Ma Nakamura's obviously going to have worse odds than I get because he is a lot, 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 lot better than me. He's better than me, basically. Um, okay. So, I mean, I, I'm quite happy because I've got everything defended, I, am, I think. I, I'm trying to stop any tactical ideas. I'm restricting him. I exchange up. I liked my idea of king here, bishop here. It seems to cover lots of things and I've got ideas small ways to improve my position queen e2 a3 b4 
And at the right moment, hopefully, I can make an exchange on f6 and put my bishop on e4. Um, otherwise, if I get my queen to e2, I may just consider even doubling up on the f-file, and then bringing my rooks nearer his king, checkmate him, make the computer cry tears of steel. Um, could be getting a little bit above myself there. Okay, so let's see. So rook d1. So obviously Komodo will keep playing the best moves though. This is the problem. And every time I make a little mistake, just a little mistake, my position gets worse. So I make a little mistake, it gets worse. I make another little mistake, it gets worse. So this this is the issue. The more, you know, and I'm human, so I'm going to make little mistakes. And if he manages to keep the pieces on the board while I make little mistakes, I, you know, it can suddenly, can suddenly change the position. So... I've got to try to, okay, I don't mind being plus one if it gets to an ending because I have great chances to win. But if it's pl only plus one in a middle game position, then then um, then I think he, Komodo will be favourite. So I'm trying to now, I'm exchange up. So it should be about plus two here, I'm, I'm imagining, because I'm two points up. And I don't see really where Komodo's compensation is uh, coming from in this position. So that's that's my thinking. Is he thinking of doing something on c5 here? Is he going to do this anyway, trying to get his e pawn moving? I mean, can he go bishop c5? Then I go bishop c5, knight c5. Can he do this? And just try try then to use his e pawn. I don't believe that because you know if he pushes it one square. My bishop comes to e2, and his pieces don't don't coordinate so well. So he's come back here, bishop d6. That, that's a sign to me that he, he's... Komodo's not happy. Now, queen e2 is the kind of move I would be tempted to blitz out. Um, and I might well play it quickly. I mean, rook here is a draw, but why on earth would I want to draw this position? I'm going to go queen e2 and save some time, I think. Um, yes, queen e2. I like this move because my queen controls this diagonal maybe it can pop over here later on and it looks like a, a decent square for the queen as long as i keep hold of the e4 square this is the key thing how do i make progress i'm not entirely sure um at some point i might even gambit a pawn with a move c5 i'm not saying this is out of the question c5 when with the idea of trying to liberate a bishop to c4 and i might i might just suddenly say look Komodo, i've had enough of your rubbish take this you monster so but i think my immediate idea is to go bishop c2 use the open d file for my rook and maybe even put my well bishop c2 just looks like a good move this is one idea the other idea is, like I said, to try to maybe move my rook around, which is not doing so much. And I quite like it somewhere over on g6. So all the all these ideas, all these ideas are sort of uh, looking quite natural here. And I think bishop c2 is a good starting point because it just allows rooks. Look, what are rooks good at? They're good at long working on long lines what is the only open line i have it's the d file so thinking like a human let's allow my rook some fresh air on derek the d file let's let it breathe let it breathe let it breathe some fresh air on the d file 22 minutes left did i really spend a whole minute on that last move i don't quite understand the timing here 22 minutes to 30 you know i mean i'm a bit worried that my time seems to go very quickly in these matches but maybe i'm just spending longer than i think so again i don't want to get under 10 minutes because i'll probably start panicking and i'll blunder then so i want to have this time to work out a plan at the correct moment okay so let's keep thinking now okay so he's trying to take more control of this square makes sense Really want to start rocking with my rook and just start attacking the guy. I've had enough of his rubbish, you know, and enough of his uh, enough of his uh, childish behaviour. 
So he is trying to take control of this square, and I did say that was an important square to control. Don't want to allow him to do that if I can help it. So rook here, and if knight there, I can take bishop takes, bishop takes, and take here. So if I go rook here, he will go bishop there, without a shadow of doubt. Trying to take off, put his knight there. Then if I go rook g3, continuing my plan, he will take on g1, let's say, Rook takes g1 and then knight c5. Trying to gain control of the center. But I can start an attack there. Knight takes f6 check. Queen takes f6. Rook g6. Queen h4, f6, all hell breaks loose. e4, rook takes g7, check. I quite like this actually. And if I go bishop c2 is the other idea here. And if bishop c5, there's no rook takes d7 there. Positional sacrifice. So I'm spending a bit of time here because it's critical, as always. It's quite a nice positional sacrifice, that last line I have, to try to take away all my opponent's counterplay. But then I won't be any material up, so it's awfully risky to play play like that as well. So rook f3 critical. Rook rook f3. Bishop c5. Natural move. Knight if knight c5, I just go bishop takes, and then I can take and go bishop e4. So here bishop c5, and then rook to g3. He continues with bishop takes here. I'd probably go like rook takes. Then I give control of the default this way. But I'm counter attacking. Hmm. A number tense moment. If bishop c2, bishop c5, rook d7. I've worked out he has to therefore play bishop d7. When I take on c5 with something, I take the bishop, he takes the pawn. I'm better, but maybe not so much better. So I take here, queen takes here, and then not so much better. So rook f3 looks looks like the critical move to me in this, this position. So I'm just spending a bit of time. It's quite, a, it's quite a, as you might have guessed, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting one to work out. I 
I might try his Rook F3, because it just looks interesting to me. Let's give it a go. Okay, let's play Rook F3. Um, I'm not sure if that is the best move. I've got, I've got uh, some slight doubts about this one. But the idea is to try to get my Rook into G6 square, so I can break, break his blockade on the E4 square. This is the general idea. Uh, just try to move and maneuver my my rook into this this g6 square, attempting to keep the pressure on his, his position there. But again, I'm not so sure if that that's completely correct because now I've, I'm try, been trying to work out the consequences of bishop c5. If he goes knight c5, I'm not so worried because I can take with my bishop. It's all about the fight for the e4 square, and uh, uh, one of the issues I have here is if he goes bishop c5. I've been trying to work out what happens if I go rook g3, bishop takes g1 in this line. So let's have a look. Bishop c5, and his idea is to take off my bishop on g1, go knight to c5, when he has three pieces fighting for control of my blockade on the e4 square. So my idea to counter that is to quickly bring my rook to g6, starting a, a, a counterattack. So bishop c5... I'm therefore thinking, um, I also maybe had a c5 move at some point. Um, I'm therefore thinking if bishop c5, I mean, probably, I mean, I can also go rook h3 there and uh, have some ideas of knight g5 check. Um, he takes on g1 either way. I'd probably go rook takes just to not expose my king. And then he goes knight c5. Now, my rook on g3, I was hoping in that position after knight c5, after the exchange on g1, I, I could play rook to, knight takes f6 check. And if queen takes f6, which looks forced to me, rook g6. And... I get there first, and I was looking at the line queen h4. It's a long combination, this. Queen h4, and then the move f6. And uh, the point being, if he takes on f6, I have discovered check with my rook. And if he goes e4, I go rook takes g7 check. And I'm pretty confident I'll be I'll be getting there first. So this is the line I was just trying to spend a bit of time. I have 16 minutes left. Okay, 16 minutes left to. Okay, well I'm going to have a little break now. You just say that was uh, something that computers don't need to do, but humans do. Uh, you can see me running back there. Okay, right. So I need to, again, I've used two thirds of my time and I don't want to get any shorter. So, so this is my idea. Rook G3 and get my rook into the G6 square. Um, at least if I put it on G3... I always have threats to that, so I can try to make my opponent go passive. And I'm hoping I've covered this uh, piece coming to c5. This is the only thing that I am, you know, it comes tactical, and I'm not totally convinced about. I'm hoping if bishop c5, I'll go through the line one more time. Now, if knight c5, I take on c5 of my bishop. So let's have a look at this. If knight c5, bishop takes c5. Bishop takes c5, knight takes f6 check. Queen takes f6, bishop e4, with a strategically, I'd say, good position. He can blockade with his bishop on d4, but I'm the only side he can win. My play becomes easier. If bishop c5, then my idea there is to play rook g3. He takes on g1. I go rook takes g1. 
He then goes knight c5. I play knight takes f6. He has to play queen f6. I go rook to g3. Attacking his queen. His queen moves. I go f6, releasing my bishop against his king. Unless he goes queen here in that position, attacking my bishop. But I, I shouldn't be worried about that because I have a lot of pieces near his king. I can start a mating attack somehow. Out of thin air, just like that. And actually, in this position, are there, are there tactical ideas now of me playing c5 next? Do I have an idea? If it's my move here, am I playing c5? And if he takes that, go knight g5, check. How about that for a, for a piece of Christmas pie? So c5, he takes on c5. Knight g5, check. He takes on g5. Rook h3, check. King g8, bishop c4, check. So he's played, he's played as, uh, as, as predicted, bishop c5. The only move to try to break the blockade here. Double checking lines. Well, you've got to have confidence in your own... own uh in your own uh, calculation haven't you otherwise what's the point so i'm going to go here anyway and um we might see this line i i i are trying to analyze in in into action now so i'm gonna the point is if he takes here i go rook takes just to keep my king in in its corner and my may, main master plan is if he ever moves his knight to c5 i'm taking on f6 and i'm going rook to g6 and I'm trying to create an attack on the king side. So uh, that is um, that's my that's my plan here. Can I can I do this? 16 minutes against 18. Ah, it's a tough game. It's a tough game you, because you know that just one little error, one one little miscalculation, which I'm only human, which I can do, especially as my time gets ticking tick ticking away. I, I let him back in the game. He, he will win the game. If he gets an equal position, I have no chance at all. So I need need to keep the pressure on him. And I need to keep finding accurate moves. If I'm indeed finding them at the moment, which I've no idea, no idea if I am. So bishop takes here, rook takes. And if knight c5. Okay, so he's taking here. No choice. I take here. He's going to try to go for a blockade now and use his e-pawn. So he's going to take and go knight f6 and go e4. Okay. Not too worried about that. Maybe I should be, but this is a... Uh... Let's have a look. Okay, so this is something. If he takes here, okay, I can't go f6. Of course not. So he takes here, takes here, and uh, knight f6, attacking my queen. He's going to try to run with his pawn. I'm going to then go queen c6, I think. Keep my pieces active. Can't start playing like a wimp. And if e4, I'm going to take on c5. And if pawn takes c5, I'm going to go rook e1 and try to keep the pressure up against his e4 pawn. So that's my plan. So he's done it. So I'm going to take here quickly. Knight f6. I think I have to. I want. To, I'm not going to go backwards. There's no point going backwards in life when you go forwards. I mean, Queen H4 is is, is all right, I suppose. Um, it's not too bad, is it? Knight here. Do I go to C6 or do I go to H4? It looks so natural to come to C6 because it's a nice little square. So I'm, I'm thinking C6 could be. Could be the way. I mean, okay, his e pawn is is has potential to be dangerous, but you know, we can't uh, we can't worry too much about these things. So he has to go knight f six. There's no 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 choice there. My well, queen's not doing much over there, so I'm gonna put it on c six without thinking. Well, I say without thinking. I'm just looking around the board and wondering what I'm missing. Let's put it there. Okay, let's do it. Okay, and now his e pawn is running, but if I put both my rooks on the e file, surely, surely, it's not running very far. So that's my plan, and you can see I'm speeding up a little bit because I just don't. I might need a couple of longer thinks in the game, 
and I just don't want to. I, if I blunder this position, it will be. It will be. Oh God, it will be painful. <laughs> it won't just be painful. It will be horrible. Now, if he takes here, do I take with the king? What do I take with a rook? Rook takes is 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 uh, safer for sure. But is it the best move? Because uh, you know I don't. Know. He allows his rook here. So it takes. If king takes, I don't want to get any tricks happening to me here. I don't see how they're going to work though. Mm. Hmm. I'm thinking king takes now, actually. Rook takes rook d8. Can I liquidate with rook here? Get to some ending. I can play quickly and easily. A critical moment, yeah? I'm going to go rook takes, because... Uh, Eek. I'm going to go rook takes just because uh, I, I don't want my king to be on the dark square with some later on some check towards my king. I don't know if that was correct because now I allow rook to uh, rook to d8, which allows him all of a sudden to get quite active. Uh, rook to d8, uh, then I have to think: do I do I then continue by trying to put my rooks on the e file? Or, or do I do I go for a queen e6 end game where I, I might be better because I'm exchange up, but it, it might just be a little bit better, nothing more than that. Well, okay, because he's going to win a pawn. I can play that position quickly. So practically speaking, it might be all right, but only practically speaking. Um, so let's see. Rook d8 looks very natural to me. Um, do I first of all then go rook to d3 potentially? I mean, I've got to watch out for his queen popping out over here to b4. Uh, he goes rook d6, so this is the move. So rook here. Now, if e4, I'm hoping I can... Mm, e4 is dangerous, yeah, for me. Because his knight has ideas of coming in here. His position can go wrong for me. He's gone e4. Okay, let's keep my cool now. So if I go here or do I go here? Which one? I like my rook here. It looks quite active at the moment, so I don't want to do that. But if I go rookie one, he can move his queen here. And um, that is quite annoying as well. So what do I do? Which way to go? Where do we go now? So here might be more accurate. And then I can try to go h3 next and just, uh, and if he goes there, I queen g6 check. So I'm thinking, and if here he goes here, I might have to bail out to an ending with queen here. Don't necessarily want to, but what choice do I have? Very hard to win that ending though. Okay, well I have to go, I think I have to go rookie free anyway, so let's let's try this one. I'm just gonna avoid uh I mean I, I don't know, I'm thinking rook d eight here. And he's suddenly getting extremely active with his rook coming down here, so my position might have might have taken a turn for the worse. But I am I'm still the exchange up, so it's just whether I can distinguish uh, the initiative that he has here. Ugh. Uh, which I'm hoping to do, but we'll see. We will soon see. His knight's very good. Not as comfortable as was. Aha, okay. He's taking control, isn't he? The little git. <laughs> and that's a nasty move there, he's threatening. And I'm losing my F-pawn.
Let's not panic though. And he's going to go here if I go h3. Is that the idea? Okay, he's not threatening there because okay. So here he goes. No, he can't go there yet. And if he takes here, I take on c7. If he takes here, I take on c7. I'm kind of thinking I, I should play h3 anyway. And even g4 at some stage. Right, I'm going to go h3 because uh, there's a lot of danger to my position there. It's amazing how he's uh, outplayed me in this this thing earlier on when uh, I, I thought maybe I underestimated some of his plans here, but he's playing a very good game. And it's going to be tough now, 14 minutes left, so I need to try to keep on top of things now. Might be speaking a bit less in these tense moments. 13 minutes left. Great, just what I want you to tell me. Just what I need to hear. <laughs> okay, so what am I playing next? Well, it all depends on his moves, really. I mean, I, I, I like the idea of just putting my rook on e1. And then uh, uh, if he takes here, I'll take on c7. I mean, I exchange up. At the end of the day, I'm still in exchange up. So I don't need to panic yet. I should be trying to win this position still. And... A lot of the moves that he plays, he gives away squares. If he moves the rook, I'm certainly going to swap queens off then. I'm getting the queens off the board, and I'm going to try to win that position. Um, very hard to win. If he takes anything, then again, I'm going to take here and take this pawn and try to start an attack. But I think my rook, my rook here is now is now not so good. So next move, the first thing I need to do is even bring it to an open line or bring it to the e-file where I can put pressure on e4. I've got 13 minutes left now. Well, 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 what's going on? My time's not going down when it's it's his move, is it? So, okay, 13 minutes. So, okay, so he's playing this useful waiting move now, defending this and keeping his threats going. Of course, why not? Why wouldn't he play this move? And now queen b5 is an idea but then his knight comes in the game bit of pressure and the problem is how, how am I uh, how am I doing stuff here it's getting tough in my position which is very annoying because I think I had a very good start to this Okie doke, so. Well, queen b5 is the only way I can see to defend my pawns now. So I'm thinking I might have to play this one and I probably shouldn't think anymore. So I'll play it. Play it quick. But the problem with this move is that it now allows some ideas of his knight coming in which he didn't have before because i'd always, always had a queen g6 check so i am certainly concerned about an idea of knight h5 i might have to just go g4 if he plays that idea and try to do this and i probably need to try to get my queen back around in order to to do some some duties i don't i mean if i want to have any winning chances then i i certainly can't i can't really drop another pawn if i can help it maybe i Maybe I have to drop another pawn. Okay. Well, I'm going to drop a pawn, aren't I? Is Rick coming here? Very tough position to play this. So maybe I have to just drop this pawn and then try to get my pieces to much better squares. My queen's always been off size. So let's get my queen to e2 and see if I can play that position so because if I go rookie one rookie five and only that's going to help him 
Okay, I can go queen c6. Rook takes some take here, which is a bailout. Oh, I don't want to do that though, do I? Okay, let's get my queen back around because my queen has not been doing much actually on c6. Maybe that was a, a mistake of mine. I need to, okay, I'm gonna have to drop this pawn and I'm gonna have to try now to do some rerouting. Put my queen on e2 and try to use my rooks in a much better way, get my rook to f1, something something along like, like this. Um, so, we'll see. Certainly letting things slip a bit, but I'm exchange up and I've, dro I've, I've lost most of my advantage, I think, but, you know, I can still still play. If I still play some moves, I should still be alright. It's not not the end of the world. I just want to get the, I want to get the damn queens off. I want to get the queens and the rooks off, and then it's alright. Now, in the last three moves, apparently I'm looking at time control. I've spent a move. I, I've spent a minute. Okay, I spent two minutes on that last move. Maybe. Okay. Well, I'm going to move quicker now. Eleven minutes to fourteen is the time situation. And it's my move. I didn't even realise it's my move. <laughs> okay, so let's continue with uh, the rerouting of my pieces. Get my queen to e2, and then I can think about what's next. So I want to get queen e2 and start trying to get my pieces. Let's just centralise my pieces for a start. I don't need to uh, worry too much about anything else. Then I can see... Yeah. I mean, it's very, it, to be honest, I mean, like, if I centralise my pieces, one thing I shouldn't do is lose the game. But we will see. Time to get my machine working on you, Komodo. And my machine is the coffee machine. And I need, I need a little boost with some of my uh, probably slightly dubious moves I've been playing. It'd be interesting to see where I went wrong with this afterwards. There you go, coffee. Get yourself going. Yeah, it's quite a long game as well, this. Um, right, coffee, go. So, is, this, is Komodo going to take its first blood today? Hopefully not. Whatever I'm going to do, I don't want to lose this game because what kind of pathetic load of rubbish is that, Komodo? Come on, grow up, son. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm just going to go B3. If he's going to play a weird pawn move, so am I. B3 can only help my position because that pawn was a weakness in a lot of lines. I'm assuming it can only help my position. Could be wrong. Coffee, come on, machine. Don't do a commode on me. If you hear a noise, it's my machine pumping out some coffee. Okay, I mean, I, I, I want to certainly try to win this game because I win the match if I win this game. And, uh, I mean, a draw is not what I'm looking for here. Draw's not the end of the world. But, I, you know, my position's a lot simpler to play now. But I, I think I can still push for a win here, surely. I can try, anyway. Knight on f6 is a great defensive piece. So what am I doing next? I mean, I got I can start trying to activate these guys. So maybe like rook f1, and if queen e5, I try to get the queens off queen here. Something like this looks very sensible. Or rook e1, yeah, rook f1, and just try to. There's another reason I put my pawn here to try to try to maybe get my my rooks active. And the good thing is, I've my, my at least my pawns are taking away two squares for his knight. So, you know, as long as I take away the squares for his knight, I've got 10 minutes here to 14. Okay. So, I need to start moving again. I'm spending too long on my moves. Just got to try to hold it together, though. Certainly been under quite a lot of pressure in this match at times. And, uh, okay, so he's trying to get d5 square, I think, for his, his, uh, his pieces. Makes sense. 
Okay, maybe... Well, it does allow me to come to d4 of my queen. And if rook here, queen here, yeah? And then queen e2. Okay, let's get the rook in the game. I can't win this game without my rooks doing something, so... Right, coffee, cheers. So queen c5, queen e2. And then just have to play that position. Well, his a6, b5 is a clever idea, yeah? Because he, he has created a pawn weakness on this square. And queen c5 is, is surely, surely Komodo's main idea here. But then I, I do want to go queen e, e, e2. And somehow sneak my queen into f5. It's a bit like the first game I won. If I can get, if I can start gain, gaining control on some files and trying to get to an ending, then it might not be so bad. So he's gone g5. Now, if I go queen e2, does he have knight h5? I'm going to go g4 against these kind of moves. I'm going to go queen e2 anyway, I think. Here, g4. Oh, he goes knight h4 then. Well, if he goes here, I go. I, surely I've got this queen covering everything. So does it matter where I put my queen? Don't know. Let's put it on e2. I mean, the benefit of putting it on e1 is that I, I could potentially try to get it to... Um, something to g3 that was of course the benefit of this okay so I, i'm not going to lose pawn i've got to go pawn takes to do that immediately and please don't tell me i've spent any time my last two moves 10 minutes under 10 minutes left now still seems like i'm holding things together the one the one thing about his maneuvers that he's done if i do get to an ending with the queens off i might be able to target some of his pawns not sure how easy that's going to be, though. Rook e5 looks like a good move at some point. Queen e5, okay. So I am going to now... If here, knight here, check. I can play that position. I'm going to go queen f2. Trying to get these guys off the board. Somehow. So, get the queens off is, is the first thing to do here, and then try to win the ending somehow. Uh, I can, you know, I can consider going g4 in some positions. I don't think that's so crazy. And he's just going to try to grab a pawn. Cheeky, cheeky guy. Right, yes, this is what I, I wouldn't expect anything less from the Komodo. Okay. So... Has he grabbed himself a pawn? Do I have any compensation? Okay. Oh, I have an interesting move. Rook f3 here. He takes a pawn. Rook f6. Pawn takes. Queen f5 check. Very tempting. Rook f3 is a crazy move, though. Yeah, it's a tactical move. If he takes, I have to go takes, e3, rook e2. I might go for rook f3. This is a fun, fun, or oh, I've got queen f5 check. I'm going to sack the pawn somehow. King here, rook g3. I'm try to just, just go for it. None of this defensive rubbish. Takes here. It's getting very tactical then. Rook at g6. Thanks. It's a bit calculation. This important position. I 
don't really want to allow his uh, pawn to march. I'll take some risks to win this, though. Okay, let, let, let's let's go for the check. I don't know about rook f3. Rook f3 is very interesting there, but I think what I'm going to try to do instead is to uh, bring my rook around now and try try to get try to just start some kind of attack against uh, Komodo here, because the only way I'm going to win this, which you know, I'm, is is not by playing passively. I've got to I've got to try to go. I've got to try to activate my pieces to the best the best I can. But this is very risky because I'm thinking if I do go rook here, he just goes rook e8, and I'm not sure how I break through. So after his king moves here, I'm trying to work out what my best best way to continue is. My queen's got vented the game now, so I'm quite happy about that. But how do I continue? Do I go this way and try to go here, setting up a sacrifice on f6 or h6? Is that one way to play? Or do I try to get my rook in on the open file, which... The only issue with that is he defends it with his rook coming to e8. So seven minutes, for, seven minutes left. Blooming neck. Right. Okay. Well, that's a that's a worrying situation. <laughs> okay. So I've got. To, I certainly got to move quick now. Okay. This is a problem in these matches, you know. Um, time is an issue. Yeah, I, I'm not sure about my last move. It doesn't didn't didn't seem maybe the one, the one I should do because his e pawn now is coming. I mean, can I just go here and take on g7? Moves his king here. I don't know e3 then. This is a problem. E3 is an annoying move. Okay, he's gone this way. Okay. Didn't expect. Rook here, e three. Do I go? I think I might go to here first. The idea, trying to get his rook there, and then come here because I've weakened this square a little bit more. Let's do it. Let's go rook b3. And the idea is if he goes rook e8, maybe then I come back to g3 because I'm hoping his rook is on a, a less defensive square. And I'm still going for some attack here. I think. Now he can take a pawn. He can push a pawn. Of course he can. I'm just hoping that my rook will cause enough problems if he attempts to do any of these moves here. And yeah, I've just got to play actively. There's no point. Okay, seven minutes left. There's no point me playing passively. It doesn't make any sense in this position. So look, I mean, I've only got one idea here, and that's to check him. So I'm going to go straight in with the check. Now, king f7. I, can, I was hoping I could go queen here check. Then he goes g6, and my rook's on pre. Do I have any tactics then? Well, it's going to be it's an exciting try. I'm trying. It's the first time I've been kind of vaguely attacking in the whole game here. Vaguely attacking. King f7, check. G6. Rook f6, check. King f6. That's not going to work, is it? Here, check, g6, rook f8, check. I don't, know, don't feel that's going to work either. So he's gone, he's gone in. In like Flynn. Now my rook is always a problem here. 
So Rook F4 looks like the most sensible choice. Still takes him three moves to get this pawn going. I can try to mate him in the meantime. Now if I check, G6 is nothing, no? Nothing at all. Come back to D1. Pushes his pawn. Very. That's very interesting as well. Okay, I'm going rook f4. I'm going to play it quickly because uh, my time's getting short. I was trying to work out the check queen d1 e3 variation there when I have ideas of queen a1. I have some sacrifices, but um, I don't suspect there's more more than that there. So again, this is like this is an ideal computer position because it's so tactical. Okay, it's equal material now, so I don't know how I'm going to fare here, but I've got to at least at least try. And keep the pressure up. My idea now is to is to try to get this check in next, and I'm just going to keep attacking. I'm going to try to check and just attack. And uh, I'm expecting here check. Well, if he checks, maybe I'll go rook f1, and take a draw. But I don't really want to take a draw even here, you know. I mean, if he checks, I go rook f1. Might might be a draw, but let, let, let's let's just try to win, shall we? Just 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 give it a go, because then I win the match. Okay. Well, he's not going to go for that anyway. He's gone here, so okay. So if I check here, what's he doing? Now he always has a check here. So a nice sensible move to play would be king here. Which I'm playing. Okay, I'm playing this quite straight away. Time's very short, six minutes left. And I've got to play blitz chess now. Oh my gosh, I've got to play blitz chess against 2350. Give us a break. So... Thanks, mate. Cheers. And okay, so at least I'm attacking, but um, computers are known to be able to defend okay. And if there's any tactics in this position, I probably won't spot them in time. I feel just because uh, um, I, I I'm running out of time, and my opponent will never run out of time. But an interesting position here. Now I'm trying to sneak my queen into g6 and keep the attack going. This is the way to play. I mean it might just be, my position might just be bust, I don't know. If I had this position against a human, then yeah, I'd be reasonably confident. But now, now I'm playing against uh, the computer. It's actually, uh, you, get, you kind of get yourself psyched out. Because you kind of think, well hang on a minute, like it's, it's all going a bit, uh, it's, what's happening? It's not going right, but uh, I don't know. I mean, at least I'm trying, but it's it's very hard until you put yourself in my position to actually play play against the computer in this way. It's very very hard. Well, I have to go queen a5, don't I? Rook f8 checks is not going to work, is it? I have to go queen a5. Only move. So, only option. Yeah, and it might be easy to say, oh, I should have done that move or that move, but just, just you know, if you just try to think of the actual, um, you know, what it's like playing, knowing that you can't make a mistake, it's incredibly hard, actually. A lot harder than I thought it would be. Now he can go queen c1. It goes here. He wants to go e3 next. So I go here and here. Or do I go here? So tactical position. <laughs> this is unfair to get this position in this. Uh, it was not unfair. It's just uh, so tactical. Give us a break, Komodo. Hmm. 
Okay, I don't know, so I'm going to play rook here. Maybe my queen needed that square. But I haven't got enough time to think. Need a bit more time here. It's a problem. Maybe I spent a little bit too much time earlier on. So I've got six or five minutes left, something like that now. I mean, the other option there was rook c8 to try to do that, but let's keep going. See, my opponent's king does look quite exposed here, but I'll probably find out afterwards my position is just completely lost. Um, right, so e3, critical move, yep. What am I doing against that? Five minutes left. Komodo's time hasn't gone down at all. e3 as expected so rook c8 e2 oh, let's play it. I don't, I don't know can't can't play too Slowly, is e pawn? How did that get so near? Yeah, so it's certainly not what you want against this beast, but you can probably tell I haven't been particularly comfortable with my position for a while, so I need to um, hope something happens here. I have to hope Komodo makes a blunder. That's all I need. I just need a Komodo blunder. A little mistake. Four minutes twenty-two. Give us a break, and your time hasn't moved. Komodo hasn't spent any time the last three moves. What? Really? Okay. Well, that makes things <laughs> with this position. Oh no! I mean, this is a. Uh... That's not on. Okay. Right. Four minutes left. Just got to move, haven't I? Quickly. Anyone want to take over? Anyone want to take over my position? How many mistakes have I made in this game? Well, it's bad. It's bad if I lose this one. I mean, I shouldn't be losing this kind of position, but you know, now I had my chances. I feel right. Let's let's not give up yet. Okay. What the hell is going on? Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Who's... Time is a ticking. Well, I'm going to take this one. I can't see. I haven't got enough time to consider other options. I'm assuming he might... Oh, no, he can't take there, can he? So let's see. Queen e4, probably. Then what do I do? Four minutes left. Queen's well out of the game. This is an issue. Queen e4. Well, I need, I need to play some uh, blooming good moves here to uh, to save this one. Um, anyone got any ideas? Queen e4. Is that this is a this is a certainly this is such a tough position to play. Uh Queen E four. Maybe I'll play uh, can I go Queen C five, E two. And then if I go no, and if G two, E G four, E two. So I'm thinking a move like Queen E4 might be quite good here. Um, just a move like that, trying to put all his pieces in the centre. I still can't see an easy way to get through to his king. He's played Queen E4. That's the issue. And now he's just got two moves to Queen. And that is another issue I've got to deal with. OK. 
on the light squares and I've got three minutes left. Oh, 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 oh. Is there any way out of this predicament for me? Can't see it, can you? Anyone help? I don't want to play G4, it's just too negative. Can't see what I'm supposed to do here. Okay, running out of time. G4 looks totally wrong, but I've got to play something. What, one minute left now? Let's have a look. It's a G4, E2. I really don't want to play queen here. This just looks like uh, it's not not the way to do it. But what else can I do? Because he's one move from queening. Just one move. And the problem is, if I go here, queen here, I expect that he has his rook coming to d1. So how much time do I have left now? I'm just still trying to find out the time situation. So maybe around this point somewhere I had a, you know, I, I was doing okay. Um, you know, I don't know. But it's just not the kind of position you want against Komodo. Um, so I was thinking here probably uh, Komodo will now level the match. Uh, giving me a very uphill task in the last one. It will be on the last game. Well, it's going to be interesting at least. So E2, I have to go Queen E1. So I've got 1 minute 47. Loads of time. 1 minute 47 against the computer's 10 minutes. And his time hasn't changed at all over the last three moves. So E2, Queen E1. And I've got to try defence. So he's coming now with the attack. Oh dear. I'm getting very, very scared. Especially when the rook's coming down here. Oh no. Oh no. Right. Okay, in we go and pray. Okay. <laughs> okay, well that's uh I mean okay now now I, I think E2 is probably this is probably the end of the game now. So well done Komodo. You git. Um I think Komodo is uh has done the job here. I don't I don't think I'm uh, I don't think there's any way I'm saving this position now. Um not by a miracle. My queen's got too too far out of the game here. So it'd be interested to see where I went wrong. I mean there's probably a couple of occasions where I could have improved in, in, in this one, but Okay, is there any any hope for me here? E2, Queen E5. Any hope at all? E1, Queen. Check. Ah! And if E2, Queen E1, he has Rook D1. So I don't know what I'm doing against E2. Simply just don't know. Can't see how I counter attack here. I need my queen to sort of sneak around, you know, if I had my queen sort of on a7, perfect, but in this position, it's uh, it's not looking good. Well, looking bloody awful. Because um, he, always, he always queens with check as well, so after e2, I don't think there's uh, a way out of this. I, I mean, I, I can try playing on for a move or two with queen e1, but... Uh, it just seems like at some point he's going to get me here, especially with my time situation. And because I've drunk so much water and coffee, I need the little boys' room again. Never helps. So yeah, so I will I will be on the uh, the chess.com TV after this game. So I'll have a chat with you guys on there. Not on there at the moment. You can tell me where all went wrong with uh, your computers. Um, and there is one more game later on to decide the match which will be very interesting so looking forward to that game later on um, and of course I'll play this game out a little a little bit but I just think with my time situation and the way things are going it'll be a miracle if I can actually now hold the draw somehow um, and my king is looking quite exposed he has good coordination here I mean do I have any hope I mean do I have to go on defensive with rook here 
e2 rook there rook d3 check king here oh dear just looks horrible looks horrible i mean i'd rather keep my rook in an active square and uh try try to uh try to defend like that i mean if i was playing a human again even here there'd be tricks because there's lots of ideas of some you know his king is not entirely happy itself i mean even here if i if i was black maybe e2 queen e1 h5 would be a nice way to win swapping over to the other side of the board that could be quite a clever way to win actually um it might be better ways to win And he won't blunder, that is for sure. Okay, so he's doing a move I just didn't consider at all. And he wants to come in with some nasty checks. No time at all. I'm looking at all sorts, rook g5, can't get any of them to work. And I'm running out of time. Ah, time! What am I supposed to do, guys? I don't know, maybe, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what the time situation is. I mean, uh, maybe I've overstepped the time limit, but it's... Uh, it's looking like I might have overstepped the time limit there, to be honest. Is that a... Because uh, unfortunately, I, I can't see the times live. So when I get short of time, I only get an update. So uh, it's possible. I've got 45 seconds. Just grand. Well, I mean, it's lost now as well. I was hoping to get some uh, perpetual check with my queen. But that's just a fantasy in this position. So I'll probably just resign here. I mean, even on the last move, I, I, you know, was there anything there? I don't know, but uh, we'll see. I mean, after rook takes here, um, there's nothing I can do. Nothing I can do at all. I was thinking rook g7, king takes queen c7, checks some weird perpetual, but it, it shouldn't work in a, it shouldn't work in a million years. It doesn't work, so you can always put his king there. So I think it's probably time to resign in a second, unless I can think of any other options after rook here. I really need my queen to come in on the light square, then I could then actually win this position, but it's uh, not happening. Has the time just gone in the way? So rook takes, and he's going to have mate here. I think this is the end. Rook g7, king takes, well, wow. queen c7, rook f7, queen e5 check, king h7, no more checks. Okay, well, I think I'm going to resign here. So, uh, thank you, Komodo, for that nice beating you gave me. And Komodo has now leveled the match. Uh, so, it's one and a half all. And uh, played a brilliant game there. So well done, Komodo. Obviously a bit disappointed to lose like that because I should have been doing well. Uh, but all credit to Komodo um, for doing that uh, to me. Uh, it just seemed to get a bit of a niche tiff and I, I just wasn't finding the best move. So I will, I'm resigning by the way, so I've given up now. Um, mate in 65 announced. Oh, well, thank you, Komodo, for telling me that. Very kind of you to just uh, rub, rub the salt, rub the salt in the wound, shall you, Komodo? Uh, very kind. That's just what I wanted to hear. Um, mate in 65. God, this thing's strong if it can see that. So I'm now going to go on to the um, uh, chess.com TV on another window and see what I did wrong. Maybe Larry can tell me what I did wrong there. Uh, please, Larry, if you could tell me what moves I did wrong. I'll have to close the window again, just bear with me. And um, we'll just have a look at some moments during that game 
where I could have improved. So obviously, um, should not have lost that game from the position I had. I had uh, quite a lovely position, but I got outclassed there in uh, critical moments. So where did I go wrong? Uh, Larry, hopefully you can still hear me and hopefully you're gonna tell me. So, and I'm just logging into the chat now um, on the TV. Do, 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 do. Long game as well, it's a tiring game. Um, okay, right. So, what did I do wrong? Okay, so I logged into the chat. Queen c6 lost a lot of my advantage. I kind of felt afterwards that was a bad way to go. Um, okay, so let's just have a look at Queen c6. So I was probably doing all right all the way up to that point. And um, very, very silly of me. Um, I mean, I kind of thought around there that I wasn't sure. Queen c6 looked quite, looked quite logical, but of course I'm just exchange up. And I started to play some very bad moves again, so a bit disappointing there. Um, was I doing okay after that, uh, Larry? I don't know. Maybe you guys can help me because I obviously haven't used uh, used um, I, um, a computer there at all. Of course, I should have been winning that, but just let it slip. So let's just have a look. I'm just trying to find a moment when Queen C6. I mean, it looked quite a decent game up to that point. Um, so... It wasn't so bad, but maybe this was a good idea. I kind of, I kind of thought around here. Maybe I haven't come up with the right plan. Uh, but Queen C6, bad, bad move there, which is understandable. Maybe so. What do I do here? My queen, my queen. Yeah, I mean, I found that my queen's totally offside here. Um, so this is this is um, this was uh, kind of the way, way the wrong way to go. Actually, as I found out later, if I just put my queen on E2, then I'm probably still just an exchange up. And that must be the way to go. I mean, maybe queen to, I don't know, maybe, do I take, do I take here? No, I don't take there first for tactical reasons, but queen e2. Queen e2. I mean, why, why am I putting my queen in such a silly square? I think I was a bit too desperate to get the queens off. So, yeah, queen e2. And when you look at it now, it just, it looks so much, so much easier. Um, okay, well, it's going to be a tough game. We've got all to fight for on the next game. So queen e2, and here obviously I'm just exchange up, and I've got coordination and got great winning chances here. So queen c6, horrible move, kicking myself about that move, because now um, my queen is in totally the wrong place. My queen needs to be in front of the pawn so I can blockade it and activate my rook. So such a horrible move, queen c6. Now when I look at it, maybe up to that point I played okay. Later on, was there a draw? Um, I still don't believe I'm worse here. You know, it's probably just around equal here, but of course, in my time situation and um, um, everything else, it's very easy to go wrong. I mean, even here, I should be okay. Uh, maybe something like Rook to G3 was a better try. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that was a tough game. Uh, I need a bit of time to recover after that. The next match is going to start, the last one. So we're on two, one, one and a half each, me and Komodo. And I'm looking, we're both going to be looking for blood in the next match. I want some revenge for that game. Um, and in these situations, of course, I, I found out there, you cannot let Komodo get the initiative because you're going to have no chance there. And what I should have done was just go Queenie 2 in this position and I'd have a great chance, a great chance to have won this game after Queen E2. What a, what a, what a, what a sensible way to play. Um, just simply an exchange up um, and that's so obviously I'm a little bit annoyed by that but all um, all respect for Komodo and of course I probably missed a number of uh, perpetual checks but just didn't have enough time to work it out okay so I'll see everyone hopefully in two and a half hours I'm gonna go and get some food I've actually got some other work I need to do thank you all for tuning in um, and I'll see how I get on then I'll give it another go and hopefully I'll be a bit refreshed that game so thank you very much for tuning in hope you enjoyed the show and I'll see you later well played Komodo cheers goodbye